this is Paul. I just returned from my second uh, transcontinental motorcycle camping trip on my trusty uh, Suzuki DL650 and was asked to uh, provide a video on the equipment I carry and how I carry it on the bike. So uh, now that I've returned, I thought I would do that. I'm not sponsored by anybody in this video, so all the equipment I purchased myself. Uh, I have two shad side cases that, that are each 36 liter and then a shad top case which is 48 liter. Uh, this was actually acquired used uh, from a fellow that uh, had an FJR 1300 and no longer used it. So uh, I bought it from him at a, a reasonable price and installed it uh, on the bike. And then these uh, shad 36 liter side cases were uh, new from, from Shad USA. Uh, and then I have a, a dry bag, a 70 liter uh, dry bag um, that I strap to the back of the bike. So that's the uh, sum total of the storage that I have aside from what's underneath the seat and I'll show maybe a little bit of that as well as I did install two uh, small tubes that carry some miscellaneous equipment that I don't use on a regular basis but want to have uh, for maintenance or in the event of emergency. I also bought a, a used 15 liter uh, Jivy tank bag, uh, which I'll explain in a bit. The Jivy tank bag has a mat pocket on the top, which does uh, tend to collect water, so I don't really use that on a regular basis. But I do use the, uh, the 15 liters, um, mostly for storing groceries and some odds and ends uh, that uh, can otherwise fit into either the top side cases or the, the dry bag. The dry bag is a 70 liter first gear dry bag. It works extremely well. Um, it has a roll top on it, uh, snaps on both ends, as well as two snaps on the top. And then I attach it to the bike uh, using two rock straps uh, and have had great success with, with those. They seem very strong, easy to put on, take off, and I've never felt uh, any load shifting uh, during the course of my ride, so uh, that's that's worked extremely well. I tend to put uh, soft material towards the front of the inside of the dry bag uh, because it does act as a backrest uh, quite well actually over the course of my ride, so I try not to put anything hard on the inside of the dry bag. If I were going to describe my philosophy on uh, how I use the different bags, it's it really all goes to compartmentalization. So each bag has a specific set of items that it contains uh, and over the course of the trip, I don't vary that at all. So I always have uh, the ability to quickly get to whatever, whatever I need. And then within each of the, ba either the bag or the top or side cases, uh, I also do a fair amount of compartmentalization within the case itself, again, to try to make things faster in terms of my being able to, to find it. So all told, I have about 190 liters of capacity for storage, aside from what goes underneath the seat and the two tubes, and I'll show those tubes uh, in, in a few minutes. So quite a bit of capacity, um, but at the end of the day, I try to keep things as light and simple as possible. And over the course of uh, many nights, I've kind of fine-tuned what I use, what I don't use, try to strip away the gear that I don't use on a regular basis, aside from emergency gear. The, the dry bag contains um, really everything that I want inside the tent at night. So within this 70 liter dry bag, it includes my sleeping bag, which is a mummy bag, uh, rated down to 20 degrees. I also include a uh, inflatable, uh, air mattress which is insulated um, and has a foot pump built into it so that works extremely well. All of my clothing, um, the clothing is all contained within a number of packing cubes and each packing cube is labeled and I'll show you some of the labels that I use for in, in the uh, top case but uh, in includes my you know shoes, my sleeping clothing, uh, changes of all my outerwear aside from my motorcycle gear. Once I set up my tent, which I'll show you in just a minute, um, this bag goes immediately into the tent and has basically everything that I need to be comfortable um, when I'm uh, uh, within the tent at night. So now that I've gone through the dry bag, I'm going to take it off, put it aside, uh, makes it a little bit easier to get into the side cases, but at least it'll show you how quick and easy it is to get the uh, dry bag off the bike using the uh, straps.
straps go through the, the handrails on either side of the bike, front and back. So I'll go through the left uh, side case first. This is where my uh, tent equipment is located. So it includes the tent, the poles, the stakes, uh, a couple tarps, one of which is a footprint for the tent. And uh, the other is a larger tarp that I carry as a backup in the event that uh, my tent fails for some reason and I need to have shelter for the evening. Um, and then I also have a first aid kit that's located in this bag or case. So you can see the uh, equipment that I carry in here. This is my tent and uh, the poles and the stakes are located within uh, this two person tent. Um, the poles are only 15 inches long when they are, are uh, separated or collapsed. So that fits neatly within the shad case and that's was a determining, one of the ter determining factors in deciding to acquire this particular tent. It had a pretty good reputation. I, I have had some problems with it, but uh, you'll see a spare fuel can that uh, I'm able to squeeze in there. I uh, neglected to mention, I have a first aid kit down here. This is the emergency tarp, and this is the footprint for the tent. So uh, everything that uh, I need to set up the camp in the evening is located within this case, uh, along with a couple extra items that I'm able to squeeze in. I've pulled the right shad side case off the bike and so moving the bike around be able to take this picture um, this is my basically everything associated with my kitchen so I'll, I'll open it up and give you a show as to what that is and I travel in uh, bear country uh, a fair amount so uh, everything or almost everything um, food related including my one burner stove um, my cooking utensils uh, are included within this uh, bear case. It's a little a little bit cumbersome, but when I'm in bear country, it's nice to be able to take this out into the woods away from my tent uh, that has food odors in it and uh, don't have to worry about uh, bears, uh, hopefully at night, um, coming into the tent. I'm very careful about not eating in the tent. Uh, I don't uh, bring anything uh, that has a scent related to it in the tent and that includes soaps so i carry um, a multi-purpose soap uh, called camp suds highly recommend it it's good at washing clothes uh, for bathing with for washing dishes uh, etc and it does not have any scent associated with it and then i also have a, a small frying pan uh, with a few uh, sponges and what have you in it to be able to uh, cook things that need to be fried. But the uh, canister itself, the bear canister itself, has within it a couple of small pots, my uh, stove, fuel, my primary fuel, that I showed you the spare that's in the other side case, uh, some freeze-dried food, and, uh, and then other items of food that uh, I buy over the course of the trip. So everything related to the kitchen is in this is it in this container and then for a plate I use kind of a multi-purpose cutting board that has a, a groove cut around the outside uh, to catch liquids and I'll use this for both food preparation uh, as well as using it as a, uh, a, a plate in which to eat so um, that serves to multi-purposes. Multi the last big um, container is the 48 liter uh, top case uh, from Shad. Uh, as I mentioned, I acquired this uh, used. You can see it's fairly well uh, stuffed with material. This is the, the catch-all, but again, even as a catch-all, I try to uh, compartmentalize everything. So I have a pair of uh, winter uh, waterproof gloves that I use. Uh, over here is a uh, WeGo uh, battery, which has a uh, jumper cable associated with it. I use the uh, battery to um, charge items of equipment at night when I'm at camp. And this does have a 12 volt uh, attachment to it that you can plug in, which during, over the course of the day, if I didn't have power at, at my camp, which I usually don't uh, during the day when I'm uh, riding, this will go into the tank bag and I will 
uh, plug this into the 12 volt uh, outlet at the front of the bike uh, to, to recharge it so that I can use it in the evening. So this has been ex extremely, extremely helpful. Um, I keep my, my bath kit, uh, personal items, again, outside of the, the tent, uh, including toothpaste um, and, and things like that. Anything that might have an odor to it are kept out of my tent uh, at all times. I have <clears throat> on each of these items, let me show you an example of it, um, a tag that I've put on that describes what exactly is in the bag so that if I'm tired or it's uh, at night and it's difficult to tell the different colors of the bags, um, I'm able to uh, fairly quickly identify what is in each of the bags so I, it kind of minimizes the fumbling around. But you'll see on this one that I have electronics and wires. So this is kind of everything associated with my GoPro to be able to take pictures, uh, all the charging cables that, that I might use. This bag is uh, water and wash, uh, wash supplies. This has a collapsible sink in it, which I can use to uh, wash dishes. It has a small foldable, foldable uh, or a small folding towel associated with it. I use a hydro pack. Um, which is my uh, method of collecting uh, water and, and using it at, at camp. Um, I have a Sea to Summit, a uh, very small uh, uh, clothesline uh, to the extent that I wash my, my clothes at camp and need to, to dry them out. I have a water filter to the extent that uh, uh, water supplies are potentially contaminated. And then here's my kitchen sink. It's a 10 liter. Uh, sea to Summit uh, sink. I really don't use that for dishes. I use it uh, more for uh, washing uh, clothes at camp because it works extremely well for that. I, I carry in the in the top case. Uh, I use cycle gear, uh, exterior uh, waterproof uh, gear. So both the top and the bottom are located in this. I have some camera gear in this small pouch. Uh, this is toilet supplies. So I have a shovel, a, sm a small uh, shovel, as well as toilet tissue to the extent that I need to use that. This is, uh, this is a piece of gear that I'm always torn about whether I should uh, carry or not because it's fairly bulky, but it's a bike cover. And the times that I use the bike cover are when um, I'm in a city and want to try to provide some level of security to the bike. So uh, it's helpful for that. It's also helpful to the extent that uh, there's frost at night. You can put this on the bike and keep the frost off, off the seat and the um, control panel. Uh, so uh, I, I still carry it. I'm a little bit torn sometimes as to whether it should take up this much space in the bike or not. But uh, in any event, I, 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 I uh, continue to do that. And then I have a, a compression bag. It's not actually providing much compression right at the moment because some of the warm bike gear is uh, with my clothing, uh, particularly the liners. But there's two extra sets of gloves in here, a summer set of gloves and another winter set of gloves. A uh, high reflective vest is, is in here. And then to the extent that my jacket liner or pants liner um, are not needed, which they were during my uh, April May trip uh, every day. Um, but I can put them in here and then the compression sack uh, makes it nice and, and compact and able to put into the into the bag into the top case. A uh, small bag of bug repellent. Um, so I've got a spray and then one of these uh, little handheld devices that is battery operated to uh, repel uh, insects haven't had to use that during the, again the April May trip because uh, it was just too cold for the bugs to be out. And then another item that uh, it, uh, that I carry at all times are actually two cans. One can is um, chain cleaner for the the uh, drive chain, and the other is lubricant for the drive drive chain. So I carry those with some shop towels uh, to clean up any spills or help uh, help clean the chain. Um, and I also include in here a small funnel so that when I uh, change my oil in the field, um, it makes less, less of a mess. So I carry that. And then on this past trip, I knew that I was going to need to do a full oil change, including the filter. So I included a, a, a Suzuki uh, filter as well. 
carry detergent, laundry detergent sheets, which I find extremely compact, you know, great if I'm using uh, either hand, hand washing my, my clothing or if I'm machine washing my clothing uh, during the trip. Um, I include uh, map books. So I've got a, a, you know, I'm riding in the United States, a 50 state map book. Uh, which is helpful for planning because it includes um, state parks and whether those state parks and, and national parks allow camping or not. Some, some do, some don't. Uh, and it gives me a, a way to each, easily visualize outside of using the GPS, you know, kind of my destination over the course of the day. And then I include a, also a 50 state map so I can get a broad view of the United States as I'm uh, planning my, my trip generally don't uh, plan more than one day ahead. I, I'm not a big believer in um, making reservations uh, more than 24 hours in advance, and that gives me the flexibility to kind of do what I want to do uh, when I want to do it without feeling like I, I need to make distance, especially if the weather is bad or what have you. I keep a journal, so these are waterproof pages, and every day I, uh, at the end of the day, I felt a, a journal describing what exactly it was that I did over the course of the day. And last but not least, uh, a lowly uh, brush, which I use to clean out the uh, clean out the tent and keep it neat, neat and orderly. So that's the top case. The last item that, uh, aside from underneath the seat, that I wanted to show are the two storage tubes that I added to the bike. Uh, they work extremely well. This one, open it up here, includes some of the tools that I need for regular maintenance. So you'll see that there are sockets in here. There's a socket driver, an extension cable, um, and other items that are used in kind of the regular maintenance on the bike. Over on this side, which I want to open, I include a cordage of uh, various sizes to be able to tie off the tent in windy conditions, strap things down to the bike if I need to. Um, these tubes are relatively inexpensive and add just enough extra storage to be very helpful. One of the things that I do on a regular basis is go to the grocery store in the afternoon before I go to camp in order to pick up dinner and, and as well get breakfast for the next morning. I need a place to put that. As you can see, the bags that I have and the cases that I have are relatively full. So this is uh, what I use. It works extremely well. I've got a couple cable locks that are in there. And then I carry a small collapsible um, cooler in order to keep things that are uh, cold, uh, cold, especially overnight. So. Uh, that works well. Like I said, this case works very well, except for the um, map pocket on the top tends to collect moisture, so I, I generally uh, don't use it. But it does have a um, little pass through here so that I can put my uh, uh, battery that I showed you a little bit earlier, the jumper battery, into here, run the cable through here out to a uh, 12 volt socket. So. I can charge particular devices, electronic devices, using this USB connector or just go into the 12 volt port, uh, but that, that's very handy. This is under the seat of the bike and I'll show you some of the items that I store here. I've got a slime um, 12 volt compressor in order to be able to keep the tires uh, properly inflated. Uh, works extremely well. I've got a, a small uh, adjustable spanner or wrench um, that I use. I've got a multi-tool. I've got another uh, ratchet um, that I include. So I've got uh, two uh, ratchets. I wanted to be able to take the front or rear wheels off the bike. So I've got the sockets to be able to do that. And I've got the uh, socket wrenches to be able to do that as well. But I went around the entire bike before I took my first long distance trip and made sure that I had the appropriate socket or wrenches to handle, you know, 95% of the exterior fasteners on the bike. So I feel pretty confident of that. And again, the fa a lot of the fasteners are down in the, uh, the left uh, tube, um, storage tube. And uh, I also have some material in here. I've got the OEM 
uh, equipment kit, which uh, I don't find particularly helpful, but I, I carry it nevertheless. And then I include both in this little package here, as well as this tool here, the ability to uh, plug a tire in an emergency. So between the tire plugs and the slime uh, tire inflator, uh, at least I have some ability to maintain or uh, uh, repair uh, small damages to the tire if, if I need to. So that's my uh, gear loadout for 2022. Uh, it works for me, it may not work for everybody, and uh, I've fine-tuned it over the course of several years of riding. Uh, it uh, pretty much works for me in cold weather and warm weather, and I've got the uh, gear that I need to uh, manage long-distance motorcycle touring. So, not saying it'll work for everybody, but it's worked uh, fairly well for me. It's a great bike. I've got nothing but good things to say about the, the Beastrom. It's a highly reliable bike, and uh, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. And the bike does fine crossing the North American continent, so uh, it handles you know the, the mountains and the hills with its uh, great torque at low end and uh, even the freeways or interstates uh, that allow 80 miles an hour of travel, uh, this bike is able to keep up quite, quite well with the traffic. So I've got nothing but good things to say about uh, a bike that comes in uh, without all the extra gear, I think under 500 uh, uh, pounds. So hopefully that helps. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to uh, send me a note. So that is my gear loadout here in 2022 for my 2020 uh, Beastrom.